Welcome to Toffee TV for the final match preview of the season. Arsenal versus Everton. A quiet affair. End of season. Nothing to play for. The way we wanted it, wasn't it? It's the way we wanted it. For us, you mean? Yeah, for us. Yeah. For us. Obviously, Arsenal, it is a huge, huge game. The potential of winning the Premier League. If, if obviously they beat Everton and obviously uh, West Ham get a result at uh, the Etihad, which seems improbable, but you never know. You, 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 you know, you never know. But Arsenal have to do their job first, which is beating a stubborn Everton side, which have gone undefeated since, obviously, the game at Stamford Bridge. Mm -hmm. It seems a very long time ago. Um, Six games ago. Mm. Six five unbeaten, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. The last team to win the top flight division in it's either a champ the championship division one or the Premier League was who started the day not top of the league was Arsenal themselves in nineteen eighty nine. Make that what you will. A great day for Everton. City yeah. It was a good day for Arsenal and for Everton. It was. It was fantastic. It's so it was like fantastic. But of course, this is going to be a really, really difficult game, a really tough game. Um, uh, if Everton, if Everton don't get out of first, second, third, maybe fourth gear, then it could be a very tough watch for us toffees. Because last, I mean, last week we know we played Sheffield United, and it was a bit of a just a kickabout. But it ain't a kickable for Arsenal, and they can do some serious, serious damage when they want to. We've seen how many, you know, we've seen the goals they've put in, you know, beating Chelsea recently and West Ham, and they went to Sheffield United and um, Burnley. Was it Burnley as well? They just, they just can score goals when they need to, and they need to turn it on. And I get a, fe I get the feeling on on Sunday. I get more than a feeling uh, mm -hmm. that they are going to want to make sure that no matter what happens at the other game that they do their job and they do it properly and that means Everton can't mess about in this game they have to come out and at least you know be organised and be solid and not that I think there'll be too much going the other way mm. and I have to be really realistic in that but it's going to take a team effort to to to, to stop Arsenal isn't it Gonna take a mammoth effort mm. to stop Arsenal. Yeah. Really, yeah. When you're playing with nothing to play for, like Evan mm. haven't, and people can say, "Well, the pride and all that." A warm afternoon in London mm. when you've done, you've had a hard season, and you you're safe, and you're playing against the team who's got that intensity, mm. the intensity and the incentive to win the Premier League. It takes a a huge effort. I mean, mm. Arsenal have lost just one of the last 27 Premier League games at home against Everton. Mm. You know, Everton have 22 victories, four draws and one defeat is their record against us at home. So therefore, it tells you how difficult the job Everton have gone to have mm. going there. But we've just got to go out and make sure that we're competitive, really, because... Mm. Like you said, I mean, you can sit here and sound defeatist, but it's in general, it's a game we lose, regardless yeah. of the year. Of the, it just is, because they're, they're a better side than we yeah. are. For us to get something, they'll have to have one of them days. Mm. We'll have to have a really good day, and things will have to run our way as well. And, mm. But I, I'll be honest, without being too negative, I expect them to win, because... Because they have to win. I think Everton have to get off to a decent start in terms mm. of they can't concede early because if they do concede early and 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 then they they know there's not much going the other direction, then it does become a free for all. You know, it just becomes a pile on. And Everton mm. have to meet. You have to be stubborn as long as they can and have to frustrate Arsenal. Um, and that 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 that. that the problem with that is that takes a lot of concentration and, uh, and making sure everyone's doing their job. And again, I'm not sure the last game of the season, that mentality is there. But who knows? You know, listen, I, I was down at Arsenal uh, a few years back now when it was it was a hybrid and it was the last game of the season. I think they'd already won the league, obviously, mm. and they beat us 4-3. And it was, a, it was a really good open game and we you know mm. got to see Everton score three goals. And um, I think it was the end of Moyes' first season, wasn't mm. it? Um, and, you know, we... Seeing them lift the, lift the league and all that was already done. So it wasn't Franny Jeffers, yeah. Franny Jeffers pretending that he'd actually done something to win the league. Um, 
it was a it was a it was a good occasion. It was a nice mm. occasion. It was showed that there was something about the Everton team. Obviously, this will be different because there is a pressure, and um, there is a pressure on the game. There is something there. Uh, I was also there a couple of years ago. Oh, no, it wasn't what was it now? Eight. Yeah, when it was oh, seven. Ross Barkley's and Ron. Ron's last, last game. Even though Ross didn't go for another six, 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 seven, eight months. Mm. Uh, Rom's last game, he scored as well in that. Mm. Um, our record down there on saying in the last day, day of the season isn't great. The record down there is not great anyway, is it? But mm. it it is going to be very very difficult. I just don't we play our part in it being a spectacle because obviously all we've heard so far this week is that uh, you know uh, uh, Man, 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 you know Man City. Got, got to win and West Ham might stop them all this. No one's actually given any kind of credit to Everton and, and Everton's defence, which has been very, very stubborn this season. Is obviously what we've built the entire season on because it's only isn't scoring goals. Um, so I hope we do our part. And it's the Arsenal beaters, the beaters because they're a better side. Of course, they're a better side. They could be Premier League champions at the end of this game. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're a better side. But I just hope we play our part in it and it's not just like an occasion where everyone just we just roll over and because I, I don't know I just I I, I just want to see Everton have one final game of the season where we go yeah this this we have got the professionalism to do something in this game and and make sure we do everything to 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 try and win a game of football for us and for the f Everton fans who'd be there I'm sure listen Sean Dice won't send them out to to not put that effort in really they'll go out and give it a good go spectacle not convinced about that because Everton. We try to mm. board the game down, yeah. don't we? That's what we try to do and then nick it. I hope we're competitive. And I hope if Arsenal do win, I hope the thing I hope for is that we make them work for it. That'll be the biggest thing. Mm. I mean, I was just looking there at some of the stats. Arsenal have won their final Premier League game of the season more often than any other side. <laughs> They've won 22, including the last 12 on the run. Yeah. So game 13. Da -da -da -da, you never know. Uh, also having the best win rate. 71%. They've not lost their final league game of the season since the 2004-05 season when Birmingham City beat them 2-1. And they've not lost the home final... Team in blue. Not lost the home final game of the season since 1992-93 when Tottenham beat them 3-1. So, clearly the odds are in our favour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, listen, I'm a bit like you. Everton win, listen, the last 10 Premier League games away from home as well. Um, mm. Three, four, last six. So there you go. More, more stats against us, which mm. means that surely Sean says all season, Lord of Average, is something's got to turn. You never know. Do your stats tell you when the last time Everton won the last game of the season and we were away? Come back to that one. Come back to it. anyway. Let's have a little look at the little stat. Pack. Stats, mate. I'll have to just think no, about it. That the little stat pack that Ned has put together. This Sunday at the Emirates Stadium, Arsenal take on Everton at 4 o'clock in the Premier League for the last game of the season. In the Premier League, Arsenal and Everton have played each other 63 times, 37 wins going to Arsenal, 12 to Everton and 14 draws. Arsenal's last five games, they have won five games and kept four clean sheets. Everton have won four, drawn one and also kept four clean sheets. This season, Arsenal currently sits second. They've won 27 games, drawn 5 and lost 5. Everton sit 15th. They've won 13, drawn 9 and lost 15. Arsenal have kept the most clean sheets this season with 18 clean sheets. Everton have kept 13. In the top scorer chart, Bakayo Saka has scored 16 goals. Havertz and Trossard follow behind with 12. Everton's top scorer is Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's got 7. Abdoulaye Dekore also has 7 goals. Saka also leads the assist chart with 9 assists. Mike McNeil has the most assists for Everton with seven assists. There you go. Nice one, Ned. Uh, your question, I think, yeah, the 2013-14 season, mm. when we beat Hull City 2-0. With goals Rom from James, James McCarthy. McCarthy. And a little cameo at the end from um, Traore, who we'd only seen. Scored against Swansea on his day. Mm. Um, I think it's you've probably got to go back then. So that's what ten seasons ago, the last time Everton won an away game, the final game of the season. I think that's just off the head. You might be able to tell me difference. We've won an away game, the last away game of the of the yeah. season, but not the final fixture of the season when we won at West Ham when Rom scored and he gave mm. it the old Delafay yeah. a year later. 
But um or was it Aussie? No, Ron think... scored the header, didn't he? But anyway. Uh, yeah, Arsenal. You know, it's, it's a difficult place for us to go. Mm. And like we've just said, they could win the league. And let's have a look at the team. The the last time out for them. And you look at the front three, Trossard, Havertz. You've got Saka. You know, they've got Martinelli come off the bench at United nearly scored. Got good players, haven't they? You know, yeah. Rice, Party, Odegaard's fantastic. They're, you go through the team, they're tremendous and you've got yeah. really good options as Martinelli well. on the bench, mm. Jorginho, uh, Jesus, Smith Rowe, Shinchenko. They've got they've just got they've got a very, very good side. Very you know, and it's gonna be very, very difficult. But it's gonna be very difficult to stop this man Saka. Let's just have a little look. I mean, mm. as you can see, his heat map all oh. All on that right hand side, coming mm. in on his left foot. Uh, 35 games, um, 16, 16 goals. goals. Is Just it? slightly overperforming his yeah, XA, yeah. 15.5, nine assists from an XA of 11. He, <laughs> Good up, season. Up, him up against Ashley Young will be interesting. Young, you should all have his uh, experience. Yeah. He'd be like that. Yeah, uh, pass him on. Coming inside, pass him on. Jared. Ex Man United, you know, mm. only won City to win the league. Mm. Go ahead, you do what you James want. James Garner and Jared Brantwaite, I imagine, will be uh, trying their best to stop them. I can imagine all day. And Dwight McNeil, all three of them, just getting back to try stop Saka. Nah, he's, he's, listen, he's had a good season, hasn't he? Um, but there's loads of. Oh, I love Odegaard. Yeah, he's fantastic. fantastic. There's loads of them, mate. They're, they're, they're a top side. Declan Rice has been sensational. You know, ball for 100. And, Five million, is it? Mm. Under ten million, whatever it was. And yeah. they've got the reward with them. He's been brilliant and lucky. They could, if things, you know, bounce their way, mm. end up Premier League champions. Ah. It seems unlikely because you'd expect City to win. But well, you know, they've got to do their job, haven't they? And mm. what I'd say is obviously Arteta has done, has made the tough decisions this year. The goalkeeper, obviously, Raya, who, mm. who I, I, I think we both thought was better than yeah, yes. Ramsdale anyway. And, um, but also like Kai Havertz as well, I find it an interesting situation as well because when he first came in, it was very difficult to know what he was going to do with them. Or there was a lot of question marks about a centre forward needing a centre forward. Mm. And, um, but he, you know, he had faith in him. He's had faith in in the goalkeeping situation, and he's made those tough decisions that other people have have made have questioned. Mm. And it's made them a better team, and it's pushed them on, and you know. There was an idea of like Jesus was going to come back and he was going to be the final answer, but he but he stuck with this way of playing, and and the, and and it's and it's worked and he's pushed City harder this season and and obviously um, you know it's it's might not be there yet, mm. but with the with the the experience that they gain again once again this year that mm. might you know drives them onto maybe next year and if they don't get it, I don't think well I think, you know you hear different things but. This Man City team is such a machine and it's got everything going for it. And I just think the base that Arteta started from with this Arsenal team and where he's took them to, I think he's done a magnificent job. And the sad part that Everton weren't in any kind of position to maybe look at him ourselves. I mean, I know Marcel Brands has come out and said he tried and he spent a night at his house trying to convince him. But I don't, I just don't think this, I just don't, I just think this club would have swallowed them up. How would that be to be? I, I don't think. Everton didn't lose out to Arteta. They went with Ancelotti. Hmm. Would Mikel of, Ar Mikel of Arteta? Mikel of Arteta? Mikel of Arteta. Mikel of Arteta. Yeah, that sounds good. Would Mikel Arteta have done a really good job at Everton? It's difficult to say because the circumstances of our club are not what Arsenal is and he's had a hell of a lot of money to spend and being able to do it. So it, they made the right decision because they've talked they were going to get Ancelotti and we were going to get Arteta. Who knows in the future if he becomes available and he fancies a cracker at Everton, if Everton are more stable, you never know. But he's done a good job at Arsenal. Um, they'd be, it's that Villa game, isn't it? That Villa game the other week, it could have been so different, this. Mm. He could have been just having to win to be but, the, and, but then other people would say it's it's not going to win at the Etihad, are they? You know, I'm not I'm not saying that's what it is. Yeah, but, but I think it, you're right. If they'd have won that day, clearly, but if they'd have beat filler at home when people expected them to, when they were, mm. they were bouncing oh, yeah, teams, yeah. that's the killer for them because yeah. they've won the rest of the games. Yeah. And that would, what I'm saying is, had they done that, they would have only... Had Sometimes that happens though, doesn't it? Where yeah. That was the the, champ, the Champions League as well, mm. that week as well. And sometimes, 
seasons do come down mm. to weeks, you know, one week of a season or two weeks of a season if you're playing in the two-legged phase. That's where it really can come, you know, everything boils up to that point and it's where the bigger squads get through that and can handle that situation. And they just didn't quite have it and mm. to, to cope with those games and that that's the pressure of becoming a, a better side and going to the final end of the of the season and managing those players. And that's where you'd have to look at Manchester City sometimes and think they've done remarkably well because not only have they handled the Premier League, but they've managed, certainly obviously last year, winning the treble and City could win the double this season. It's been able to handle all those things and mm. it's 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 incredible feat. So, and you will, if you're an Arsenal fan, you will be sitting there going, God, we're, we're actually amazing and we didn't win anything this season. And that's where sometimes you have to get that Carabao Cup, isn't it? Or mm. that FA Cup. Mm. Just to just to keep adding those momentum, trophies. Well, yeah. Isn't it? Just so, yeah, listen, it's gonna be that's gonna be a tough game. Let's just have a look at the Everton team from from last week as well. Can you see any change? I can see one change right away that I would maybe make, and that would be at the right right back position. Just because put of the ben pace. Goffrey just because of the pace that Yeah, he got. may well he may well put Ben Goffrey in at right back. Uh, anywhere else? No, no. Jack Harrison. I don't. I think he likes the structure. Mm. Um, away from home, particularly, and James Garner will operate on that right hand side again. Yeah. And, and I imagine Dom will get the nod over Beto. Played well last week, Dom as well. Um, yeah, I think that. I think it'll be the same. But mm. you're right. It could be Ben Goffrey just to give us some recovery pace in that back line. Mm. And for Evan, it could be. Could be the last time we see some of those players as well. Which well, is, I think which it is, will be, yeah. Which is really sad as well. I mean, obviously we watched the we watched the lap last week and you didn't really get any sense, but I mean it's it's just it's just sad, isn't it? It's sad for a lot of Evertonians, a lot of younger Evertonians who look up to a lot of these players. And we can't say with any any kind of accuracy who, you know, there's players there that obviously will be at Everton next season. I imagine Jara Prantwaite will leave this summer and that's that's good because yeah. He's probably the least one anyone would want to mm. lose right now because he's been tremendous for us. But it's, you know, having to explain it, you know, having to explain to Zach that he'll probably go and mm. he's devastated. But it's like, well, if they use the money, and this, I think this is where Evertonians struggle. It's not necessarily losing the player, it's what we've done to replace the player has always been an issue. You know, we can go back to Romelu Lukaku. You know, we can go back years and years and, and pick out players mm. who we never replaced properly, of course. But just recent times, like Rom, and not replacing them with the centre forward, they score goals and, yeah. and that, you know, bit us on the arse. And, I, th- I know, just Jared like. Brantway could, if you get a good mm. fee for him, could push Evan in the right direction. Onana, I imagine, will move on as well. I just hope that whatever happens, Everton are ready for it. Mm. Like, because. One of the things you've just mentioned that there, every time we've had to sell a player, there's almost this shock at the yeah. football club. Oh my god, we didn't realise we'd have to we have to we have to sell up. Oh, yeah, but people aren't getting paid this week if you don't. I know, but I'm in total shock and it's like then it drags on for weeks instead of going Jared Brandway's going and the next day there's his replacement. We've already scouted, checked on to it all because mm. we knew that there was a chance he's coming in. Mm. You know, you mentioned Lukaku there. It was like, oh my God, we sent a forward. Even though he'd said in February, yeah. he wasn't. And it's yeah. we've got to make sure that this summer we have to be grown about the situation. The fan, the manager's already said it. That like the football's already said it. So therefore, you'd think you'd that, hope but... that whoever gets sold, the replacement is ready to go. Mm. The money is there. Bank, you're in. Okay, you'll be a drop off in quality, but at least we've got the player in. Through. But uh, you'd think if that. Again, you don't want to sell your players, but if it no. was if Brantwaite no Nana did go and commanded a good amount of money, then that should give Sean Dyche Kevin Thelwell. Mm. I know there's debts to pay, yeah. but now because you can spread transfer yeah, fees, yeah. it should give Everton more than enough to go out and, and build, yeah. start building again. And, and the hope then is 12 months down the line, we've got new owners, well, we've got new owners yeah, in three yeah. months, stable ones, but yeah. you'd hope then the club's in a better position, you're moving to the new stadium. And then, you know, we've had people on the lives going, what's the point then if we're just selling our best yeah, players? Yeah. We know that. Yeah. But until you get stable yeah, and yeah. you can build on it, then what happens is you hope then that you just sell one and you mm. keep the other three. Mm. And then the year after you sell one and you bring in another four. And then Absolutely. before you know it, well, you yeah, don't yeah. need to sell. No, you're you in a strong no, position. No, exactly. When teams like Newcastle and Villa... And you sell with strength as well. Well, that's it. You sell with strength. From a position you know, of strength. West Ham selling Declan Rice. 
100 million quid. Yeah, whatever. If everyone had known they had to sell and buy a certain thing, yeah. they would have got half of them. Yeah. And that would be the other so. thing, won't it? Everton have to sell on the PSR deadline and buy the player on the next day when the deadline's pass, so it goes into so the year after. That, yeah. uh, that'll be another thing we'll have to maybe consider. But but there you go. I mean, let us know what you think. I mean, I think a lot of people obviously think this this is a foregone conclusion, this game. But let's just hope we play our part. And I mean, don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, let's hope we play our part oh, on Sunday. Go, go and see what's yeah, what. and see what's what. Um, and hopefully, you know, who knows? Strange, stranger things haven't happened. Um, but you never know, do you? You no. just never know. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on this anyway. Uh, yeah, the last game of the season, it's been a tough one. It's been the worst season ever. Yeah, this season. Hard. It's been hard. Very Ended well, but it's been yeah, the it's worst. It's been very, very season, hard. Obviously. Very, very hard. But there you go. Uh, thanks. There you go. Make sure to check out the Start 11 shows well when that comes out and obviously all of the after match content and we listen we'll be back next week doing the final word and then going season through reviews. season reviews and all that kind of thing yeah. next week and uh, so make sure you stick around for that uh, make sure you check out Toffee TV Premier where we do daily live exclusive videos no adverts on any of them all the podcasts link is in the description QR codes come on the screen now see you later